Hi, I'm Stephen, and what am I doing? Today, I'm going to talk about building a hanging rack system in my garage. Let's get started. First, I want to point out that I've already built one system where I have some sorting tubs that I've put together. And you see, I have the built hanging at the top of my garage area, out, up out of the way. And uh, I used a uniform box size so that I could put all my various accessories into boxes. And I even labeled each one with a number and took a picture of the contents on my phone. So by using an album like that, I can always look at my phone first and decide where the content is that I want to look at. Now this particular system, you'll see the platform is two befores, uh, but what I want to really point out is how I attached it to my ceiling. And you'll see there appears to be a bolt uh, in my ceiling and then a threaded rod coming down to which I then have bolted underneath uh, my two before supports. And I like this system because it's nice and clean as far as the way that it attaches to the ceiling and is really not that hard to do once you have the right equipment. This is the key to the system I've been using. Uh, this is a particular brand called Sammy's. And what you're looking for is a threaded rod anchor that goes into uh, wood or concrete, depending on what your ceiling material is. And this is what they look like. So you see from this angle, they look like any uh, bolt that you might uh, put together. For this one, for wood, they're self-tapping, so you don't have to pre-drill unless uh, the wood is particularly sensitive to splitting. Uh, if you drill uh, into masonry, you can also apply these. It says it's good on masonry, uh, steel, concrete, and drywall. But here's the key to it. It's when you flip it around this side to where the nut head is, you'll notice it has a threaded insert. And this allows you to then buy threaded rod like this from your um, your big box store. If you look at the nut side, you see these have a, th a thread inside where you can use a down rod, a threaded rod to, to hang your, your shelf system. And so these, you buy the appropriate thread rod. This one is a 3 uh, which is a nice sturdy rod. It screws right in there, just like you would any metallic system. And so with that, so, Securely anchored to your ceiling joist, you can hang these rods down, which I'm told will have a, a strength of like a thousand pounds each, uh, and, and hang your system. Then you just need the correct number of bolts and washers and those kind of things that you might need to uh, attach uh, what you're doing. These rods, if you have a Dremel, uh, you can use a metal cutting disc and cut them at the length that you need and use uh, the portions uh, again and again. So this one is actually left over from a previous one I used and I'm going to use it again now. In one of my previous videos you might have seen me using this panel. Uh, these panels are for hurricane shutters for your windows or hurricane covers and so they come in various lengths. You cut them to fit over your windows and they're made to be reused. And they're nice and lightweight, so unlike plywood, which can be heavy for one person to deal with, one of these sheets only weighs about six or seven pounds for a four by eight panel. And now most of my windows aren't that large. These two panels were used on my sliding glass door. So now that the storm has passed, I've taken them off, I'm waiting until another storm comes along, I wanna be able to store these. And so where can I store them safely for one and then keep them out of the way? My idea is to store them above my garage door. Now, your ceiling may have a different amount of height uh, above it than mine does. I wish it was a little more, but the nice thing about these panels is they're about a half inch thick each. And as I said, they're very lightweight. So what I'm gonna do is use what available space I do to make a hanging system above my garage door where I will suspend some rails and then I'll be able to put these panels up above my garage door, which is a place I can't use anyway. 
and they'll stay out of the way until the next time I want to have a storm. I want to have a storm. The next time, they'll be out of the way until the next time there's a storm. So all I have to do is put the garage door down and take them out. But first, let's talk about putting them up. Okay, one of the first things you want to do is determine just how much space you really do have, which is going to determine how low you can hang something. So if I uh, use my measuring tape and I stick it up here, in this case, I see I have about eight free inches until it's right at the door. So I don't want to use a full eight inches. But the one thing I want to point out is it's very important that you actually measure your door in multiple places. Because although I may have eight inches on this side of the door, the other side might be a little bit less. So you always want to take that into account. The other thing you have to take into account is that although the door is flat for most of the distance, if you're trying to use the whole space, you need to recognize that when your door gets to a position like this, you'll see that it actually is higher or lifts up higher than what it did before. So if I put my measuring tape up here where I had nearly eight inches over there, I see I only, I have less than six when it gets here. And again, you want to measure that in multiple places to make sure you find the least space. Now, the one thing you can count on is that your door is never going to go any higher than the rail that pulls the door up. So if you want to be very safe, you'll measure that distance to determine how far up your, uh, your shelving can be. So as I said, I'm not going to have a lot of room, something less than six inches in this case, but these panels, uh, I can get, I can store five panels in six inches and I will do this on both sides of my door. I'll be able to store uh, 10 or more windows worth because as I said, the windows aren't as big as these four by eight sheets. I only have two of those. The rest of them fall somewhere between three and four feet in length uh, width at, at the most. So I think I'm gonna have plenty of room to do this. I'm just gonna have to put up a couple of different systems here. So let's begin. In hanging this system, you want to make sure you hit a joist, which are the pieces of lumber that run across your attic space that the drywall is hanging to. If you miss a joist and just go into the drywall, there's not going to be any hold capability through this. So you want to make sure you hit a stud. And the way to do that is to use a stud finder. So in this case, I have my stud finder here. I will see where I want to start. I'll come across. At the first mark, I'm going to make a mark. Now I'm going to come back the other way. It found pretty much the same spot. That seems unlikely. These are not precise, so you need to try it a couple times. Here we go. Come back the other way, I'll verify my first spot. Oh, it's, it's quite a bit different now. So you'll see I have two spots. This I would say is wider than a joist. So rather than just guessing and just choosing a space in the middle, I suggest that we take a drill with a very small bit, something maybe a little larger than the needle, and let's test. So if we test from here, see how easy that went in? Definitely not a stud there. Go to this side. Again, not a stud there. So let's start moving in a little. There, I'm hitting something. You can hear it if I, if I come in a little from this side. Oops, I can barely feel the edge of the stud right there, but I can see if I go this way, I miss it. So it's right there is the edge. So knowing that's the edge of the stud, and this is in the stud, I can assume that somewhere around right there should be the center of my stud. Now, like I said, 
you may wonder about drilling some extra holes in your ceiling. Um, if you use a small enough bit, the holes are not gonna be as noticeable. Uh, in this case, I have a popcorn ceiling. There's gonna be a little bit of flakiness anyway. And if I make too big of a mark, I can always come by a little later with some ceiling paint and try it and hide that away. But you wanna make sure that you hit a stud and that's one sure way to do that is to use a small bit in order to find out where it is. Remember I said these are self-tapping. So I could go and uh, start to try to get that up into the joist without having to first pre-drill a hole. But I find often that pre-drilling is a good way to get started because you can uh, save yourself a little bit of work. So I have a bit that is a, a good bit smaller than my actual uh, bolt because I want this to have as much bite as it can. But I'm gonna go ahead and pre-drill the hole. Just a little bit. So I can get this started. Now, of course, the first half inch is just drywall. So if I just go that far, finger tight, I know all I'm holding is drywall at this point. I want to come back to the box for a moment uh, before I start screwing that in to show you that you'll notice on the box top, it mentions this nut driver that can be used to drive these. Now these are a standard size. Uh, and, and so you, your socket wrench will actually fit these. The nice thing about these particular drivers though is they're designed specifically for this head. So what happens is once you drive it in far enough and it starts to be snug, this uh, particular driver will help release it. That's nice, but these are reasonably pricey. So unless you're gonna do a lot of these, uh, I'm not gonna say you have to have one of those. I use a regular uh, uh, socket wrench all the time on these. And in fact, in a moment, I'll show you something a little bit different too. I wanna show you the traditional way of driving these, of course, is by using a socket wrench. You could use a regular wrench, but I find a box wrench uh, often will slip off where if you have a socket wrench, you can slide it up on there and begin making your, your turns. So you wanna make sure your wrench is going the right direction and begin to put it into, into, into the spot. Once you, it begins to really bite, it gets a little tougher. But you see, you can drive these, especially if you pre-drill the hole a little bit. Uh, so you can drive these in. Now, now I happen to have an air wrench, much like you would use, uh, you'd see in a garage or something uh, for taking lug nuts off of your vehicle. And I find these are very convenient. <laughs> they keep you from uh, wrenching your shoulders a whole lot. And I could use these to drive these in. So with the appropriate bit, now you'll notice I'm not pulling all the way up on it because I wanna watch how far it is because these will overdrive. So you wanna make sure you get it just snug with the ceiling. Just like that. Now, as I said, you could do it with a regular socket wrench. You don't have to have an air wrench. Um, it just is a little bit of a labor saving device, especially when you have to do a lot of these. Now, once you have your bolt into place, uh, you can put your other bolts in as needed. And you can also then test your threaded rod. So in this case, I can test a rod. It fits in there just fine. You see this, I'm pulling down on it. Um, it it's, it's, got a, it's very sturdy. I mean, it's gonna hold what I need it to hold. So I'm going to uh, measure this distance now, make a mark on my rod, and then I'll cut that off to the length that I need. So 
So I know I have to be something less than six inches. So I'm gonna go five and a half. I'll make a mark there. And then I can unscrew this and cut my mark. To cut the rods, I would suggest that you use a bench or tabletop that you uh, have and some clamps. Now, you don't want to put this in your vise and tighten it down because you'll ruin the threads. So you want a, a clamp that has a soft edge that you can clamp down reasonably tight because once you start cutting, you don't want this to move around. And in my case, I'm going to use a Dremel to do my cuts. With my rod cooled down a little bit, I'm ready to put it into place. So to do that, I'm just going to thread it in. And then again, this is a threaded rod, so it is a little rough on your fingers. I'm going to use a piece of cloth to help me just get it finger tight. I don't have to worry about it has enough thread that when that it's pulled up in there that it's going to hold just fine. You just want it to be thread tight. Now at this point, it would be very important to determine if my size is incorrect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to very carefully lift my door and determine if I clear what I hope to clear. In this case, I've disengaged the, the mechanical opener because I want to do this by hand so I can do it nice and slow in case it doesn't fit. But as I see, I'm clearing my cut. So as long as my shelf doesn't come any lower than that, I'm going to be just fine. And as I said, with these particular panels that I'm doing, uh, six inches of opening is going to uh, let me store a good number of panels. So I have a few more bolts to put in and then we will talk about the slats. Let's talk about what I'm trying to store again. This is very important. If you're trying to store uh, you know, a sorting system like I have, I had to make sure that would carry the weight that I need. In this particular case, these panels, as I said, are very lightweight and they're reasonably sturdy. You see, here's one that uh, it's only about, I don't know, six, seven inches wide at this point. Uh, it has a honeycomb shape, about a half inch thick, but as you can see, it is very sturdy. So, and it's not very heavy at all. As I said, a full four by eight sheet probably only weighs five or six pounds, maybe as much as eight, but not a whole lot at all. And because of the way I'm building my slat system for this to slide onto, um, I'm keeping it, my bolts, reasonably close to the outside edge. So these are 48 inches wide. I've made my hanging system uh, about four and a half feet wide. So I'll have a few inches to play with. They won't be so tight that I can't get them in and out. But what's important to know is that the, that there is no weight out in the middle uh, other than um, these stiff sheets. So I just need to make sure I have something strong enough to carry this particular weight up out of the way. And I want to use something small because I don't want to take away from the space that I have. So this is what I've chosen. It's a piece of uh, wood I got in the molding section. Uh, it's about an uh, inch and a half wide, uh, a little more than I would say uh, almost a quarter inch in thickness. Uh, so it's not the most sturdy. Obviously, if I was going to store uh, 40 pounds up there on this, I would not use this particular piece. But remember, my pieces are only going to be four and a half feet wide, and they don't they carry the weight evenly across it. So I think with a few of these, it's going to be more than enough to hold my particular system. Now, I could have, if I had room, chosen to use a two before. Obviously, that would carry a lot of weight. I could also find metal straps that approximate the same width and dimension, uh, but those were rather costly. So I went with uh, my least cost option that I thought would actually solve my problem. Once I have my uh, items cut to length, 
Then what I want to do is mark them and drill the holes. Now remember, my threaded rod, is a, this is a 3 8 inch rod, it's pretty substantial. So I'll have to choose a drill bit that will make a hole slightly larger than my rod. I don't want to make it exactly 3 8 because then I have to force them through. Uh, so I'm going to use a half inch drill bit. I'm going to drill my hole in the center uh, where I want it to be. And then I will use a washer and a nut to hang this. Good, no problem. I'm gonna show this down here because uh, it might be easier to show you uh, than getting up above. Um, but first, I'm gonna use two nuts and two washers on each one. Remember, I'm cutting these rods to the exact length I need. But what I wanna be able to do is make sure that this doesn't lift any higher than I want it as well. So I'm gonna put a washer and a nut on both the front and the back. Now what's important is that uh, this bottom one is screwed down flush. So I'm gonna make sure I screw this down flush because I don't want this to be any longer than what I established. And so if I tighten anything, I will tighten it from the top. I'll tighten this one down. But I don't have to go very tight. All I want is to make sure that while this is hanging, it doesn't lift or drop any lower than I want. So I'm gonna have a nut and a washer, a washer and a nut. Anytime you're doing a hanging system, of course it's helpful to have somebody to help you hold the other end. But if you don't, you just have to be careful. Now, as I noted, I want a nut which I already have on there, and a washer on both sides. So I'm gonna feed those through. I'm gonna put another wide washer here at the bottom. I'm gonna put on my nut. I'm gonna bring that up flush. I'm gonna let that fall down. I'm gonna screw this one down hand tight from above. So there's my first rail. For my eight foot pieces, I'm gonna put up three rails. We'll come back this way. As you see, I'm going across uh, outside my garage door railing. The reason I'm doing that is because uh, to come back the other way, I would have uh, encro encroached on my crawl space. So I'm gonna put these in across the door, headed back the other direction. There's my first rail. I got two more rails to go, and then I'll be able to put a panel in. There we are. Use these bolts to get my system done. To hang my storm windows up and it sounds like I may need to get them back down soon. <laughs> if you like this be sure to like, comment, and subscribe and let me know what you're doing. Thank you.